Hey everybody, I'm Alejandro Perez, the CGI nerd, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at Python data types within Houdini. So what I want to do is open up the Python shell so that we can look at some information here. Okay, so we have this window up now, and we're going to start looking at data types. So with the data types that we are going to be looking at, we want to kind of know what each data type is and kind of the basics of what they are. And then we're going to also look at variables and kind of holding these data types inside of variables. So let's do a print statement. And then we're going to print the type. So this is a command that is inside of Python that can tell us the data type of a object. So if we run this with nothing, you can see that it gives us a error because we didn't put any type in there. If I push up, I get that code in there again. And let's type in the first data type. So we're going to look at numbers and there's three types of numbers that we can use. We can use whole numbers or integers. We can use floating point numbers, which are also known as fractions or decimal point numbers, and then we can do complex numbers. So if we run this right here, we can see that it gives us the class int. The class int means that this is an integer type of data type. So let's take a look at a floating point number. So if we look at the rounded off version of pi, and we run this, we can see that it is a floating type. Then for complex numbers, we can do something like 2 plus 5j. And if we run this, you'll see that we'll get a complex number. So we don't really need to know at this point, or really in any of the lessons that I'll be doing, what complex numbers are but it is basically a real number with a imaginary number, at least with this example. And then you can use that within Python, but for what we're doing, we don't really need that, at least not right now. But it's good to know that it exists and it's there and it's that type that we can use. Then we have strings. So strings are a set of characters inside of quotes. So if I run this, you can see that it gives us a class str, which means that it is a string type. And strings can be held inside of single or double quotes. So if I do double quotes here and I run this command, you'll see that it's still a string type command. And we can use alphabetical characters and we can use numbers, so test 01, we can do that, and it could even just be numbers, as long as it's inside of quotes. Oops, I missed one more character. There we go. So it still considers it a string. Then we have list. Lists are ordered items. So they are a storage container of data types. You can store any data type in them. And lists are held inside of brackets. And if we separate them by commas, we can put multiple data types in there. So right now I'm just putting integers, but they don't have to be integers. They can be any combination of data types. And we can even put a oops, list inside of a list. So if we run this now, oh, because I have a leading zero on the integer, it got confused because of that. So let's do that, and you can see that we get class list. So if you're using a whole number, you don't need leading zeros, it's going to confuse Python when we're doing that. Okay, so that is list. It's a storage of different data types. Tuples are very similar to this. 
to define a tuple, we're going to do them inside of parentheses, and we are going to do basically the same thing here. And we can see that we get the class type tuple. And with a tuple, basically what we are, how it's different than a list is it's still an ordered list. It is still has indexed items. The only difference is that these are immutable versus the list that are mutable. What does that mean? Once a tuple is defined, you can't change it. Whereas with a with a list, you can go through and change individual items within that list. Okay, so that is a tuple. That one. Okay, cool. And then the next type of data type that we're going to look at is sets. So sets are unordered lists. They are mutable, but they do not have a necessary order. Like with a list or a tuple, you have an index number 0, 1, 2, 3, whereas with a set, they are a collection of data, but they don't have a ordering to them. So it's very similar to what we had before. And if we run this, you can see that we have the type set. Okay. Then after sets, we have dictionaries. Dictionaries are a way to store information and they have a key and they have a value. So you can search things by their key or you can look at the index value and each key kind of stores information for it. So we can say something like key Oops, but we need to first put it inside of curly brackets. Then we're going to say key zero one, close parentheses. And then that uh, first part is the key. And then we're going to hold a value zero one. So this is the bare minimum that you need for it. And if we run it, we can see that it's a dictionary and we can add more. So let's put this inside of quotes, key zero two, and then colon, and then the value zero two. And we can run this and we still get a dictionary. So that's a key value or a key and a value that is held into a set of information there. So with dictionaries you can look up the values based off of their keys and the dictionaries are mutable and can be modified after they are created so now that we have that let's take a look at variables so variables are held into an expression like this so we have a variable called a and we're going to make it equal to an integer so we did that. Now what we can do is say print A. And it's going to print the value 10. So that is a way that we can store information from any of the data types that we created. So we can say B equals 3.14. Print B. Now we can also have variables interact with each other. So what we can say is print A plus B. So we get that value. So we can also make variables interact with each other. We can say A equals B. And then let's print A. So we could see that originally we assigned A to 10. Now we are assigning A to B, which B was 3.14. Now A is 3.14. So if we say print oops, A plus B, we get this value instead of 
this value that we did before because we've changed the value of what a is. And we can do a combination of that. So let's say a equals 10, b equals 20, c equals a plus b. Then we can say print c. And when we do that, we get the combination of a and b put together. Now, I've just been using integers and floats here for variables, but you can do other variable types. So just an example, let me just hold my string. So this is a variable that I'm creating called my string, and it's going to e oops be equal to this is a string. Okay, and then now if we print my string, we get the value that is printed out for this is a string. And we can do kind of addition of strings the way we did here with the numbers. So we can say my string, oops, my string two is equal to another string. So what we can do is say print my string plus my string two. Oops, two. Okay. And you can see that it printed them out and it printed them out together exactly the way. So they're adding the two strings together. This is a string, another string. It didn't add a space here because it doesn't know how to do that by default. So if we wanted to, we can do a quote with a space. So I do a quote, quote, and then add it. So we're adding three strings together. This is just a space in the middle. And we can see that we are getting another string. And my original one here was split by another string. There's ways to kind of break this apart in the future if we wanted to, but we'll do that in a future lesson where we're looking at details of strings and how to modify them, how to work with them and things like that. But that's the basics of data types and variables. I hope you found this useful. We'll see you guys in the next lesson.